uh, you've not been here in a couple weeks, we're in the third part of a five-part series of messages about freedom, and we've been calling uh, this message The Chain Breaker. It's really one message with five parts that we're spreading out over five weeks, and so uh, if you're coming in this morning for the first time, it may feel a little bit like coming in uh, on the middle of a movie. Uh, walking in in the middle, and so if you want to get the first part of what we've been doing, uh, you can go to uh, YouTube, or you can go to the uh, church's Facebook page, and you can watch those videos there, and catch up with where uh, what we've been doing and where we are today. And uh, we're going to turn over to the book of Luke this morning, and so um, if you have your Bible or mobile device with the Bible on it, uh, you can turn there. If you didn't bring a Bible this morning, there should be a uh, Goldback Bible uh, in the back of your pew. And if you don't have a Bible at home, if you don't own a Bible, uh, you are more than welcome to take that Bible with you. Uh, those are provided uh, by some guys in the Gideons International, and that is our gift to you. And so uh, you can turn to Luke 8, Luke 8, verse 40, and... Uh, that's where we're going to start this morning. But uh, we're going to wait to read for just a moment because I want us to be sure to have the background of this story. And so uh, I want to tell you about the guy who wrote the book. Um, and his name was Luke. I guess you probably could have guessed that. But Luke, uh, he wasn't one of Jesus' original disciples. He wasn't part of the 12 people who followed Jesus uh, for the most of Jesus' ministry. Uh, Luke wasn't even a, a Jewish man. Uh, he was a Gentile doctor in the first century, and we actually believe that uh, he traveled with the Apostle Paul, who wrote most of the New Testament, and he may have even been Paul's personal doctor. And... Uh, what we know about Luke is that he was highly educated because in the original languages, um, Luke and the book of Acts were the most well-written books in the New Testament. They had the best Greek and they were uh, the cleanest written. And so Luke was a professional uh, writer, so to speak, and he was hired by a guy named Theophilus to write an account of what Jesus' life had been like. And so this man hired Luke to go around and investigate Jesus' life and ministry and then to write it down. And so Luke did that, and then later he would be commissioned by the same man to write the book of Acts, which records the start of the early church. And uh, so uh, Luke is uh, focused in... Because he is a doctor, a physician, he is focused in on miracles. He was amazed by the miracles that Jesus done in his ministry. And where we pick up in uh, the book of Luke in chapter 8, Jesus has just healed um, a man who had a demon. He cast the demon out of this man who could not be controlled, and all of a sudden this man became whole and... Uh, in his right mind. And where we pick up is uh, Jesus has been asked by one of the Jewish religious leaders to come to his house because his 12 year old daughter is sick. And so uh, this man named Jairus comes to Jesus and he says, Will you come to my house? My daughter is sick. And uh, Jesus, of course, says, Yes, I will come to your house. But on the way, um, something pretty amazing happens. And uh, we learn about this woman um, who is in this crowd this particular day. And this woman has some very serious problems. Okay, She, uh, she had what the Bible calls a, a discharge of blood for 12 years. But what we believe uh, was happening is that her menstrual cycle had lasted for 12 years. And so she had suffered for 12 years with this problem. And uh, I could imagine that she was, uh, she was tired of being sick. 
she was tired of having this problem. And I could just imagine for 12 years she had tried to get better. She had tried uh, all the home remedies she could find on Google. She had uh, tried praying for this problem to stop. I could imagine that for 12 years she had been absolutely miserable. For 12 years she had been miserable. And I want you to understand this morning that this didn't just have physical implications. This was not just a physical problem, but it presented a spiritual problem for this woman and a social problem for this woman because in the religious system that these people were in, uh, this woman was unclean because she was bleeding. And so for 12 years, this woman had been considered unclean by the religious system of the day. And so what that meant is that she could not even touch another human being without them being considered unclean. It is possible that this woman had not been touched by another human being in 12 years. This woman had been driven in isolation because of her condition and that's what many of our conditions do to us it drives us into isolation separates us from society makes us feel less than an isolated guy. and so this woman she couldn't go to the temple she couldn't go into public and she wasn't even supposed to touch other people you could just imagine the weight that this woman was carrying. For 12 years, she longed to be made well. She longed to just belong again. She just wanted to be normal. And sure, she could hide her condition, but she knew that she was very sick. And... What the Bible tells us is about this woman is that she had spent all of her money trying to get well. And so she spent all of her money on physicians. She, she gave everything she had to doctors who promised to make her well, but who all failed her in the end. So all the money she had saved, everything she could sell, every... Uh, that she found in the couch everything she had was spent trying to get well you could imagine how desperate this woman was after 12 years seeing doctor after doctor trying home remedy after home remedy doing anything that promised any amount of hope this woman wanted to be well it's very possible that some of Luke's friends, doctor friends, may have treated this woman and known the hopelessness of her situation. They couldn't seem to find anything that would help her. They couldn't find anything to find her some relief. The Bible says that nobody could heal her. This woman used all of her human resources trying to be well, but yet no woman or not, no human could heal her. There was no human way for her to be healed. And I could just imagine if I was this woman that she felt hopeless. Like that she would never be any better. And I could imagine that after 12 years, she'd just given up. She'd just said, I, I guess this is the way it'll always be. I guess that I'll always be lonely. I guess that I'll always be isolated. I guess that, that this is how I'll have to live my life for the rest of my life. She must have given up hope. And so this isn't worth it anymore. 
I'm not doing this anymore. I'm tired of trying to be well just to be disappointed. And uh, I believe that this woman may have been at the end of her rope when we find her in this story. She'd given up hope and she may have even given up on having any kind of quality of life. And uh, then this woman hears about this new teacher in town. And he's not just any old teacher, but people are claiming that this man has the ability to heal blinded eyes and has the ability to heal people who have never walked. And I wonder when she heard about this man named Jesus, if she got just a thread of hope. And I wonder if she thought, well, I doubt he could heal me. But I'd be willing to try. Just one more time I'll try. I'll do one more thing and if this don't work out, I'm going to give up. This woman had all but given up on being well, but... One day she heard that that man was coming through her part of town. And Jesus, this was at the height of Jesus' ministry, and so there were always people following Jesus. Jesus always drew a crowd. And so there was this massive amount of people around Jesus. There were people everywhere. I don't know if you've ever been to like a UK ball game or to a a concert, but when you get in a crowd, everybody's pushing on you. Everybody's pulling on you. Everybody's trying to make their way, and it don't seem like you can get anywhere. Have you experienced that? And so there's this huge crowd pressing onto Jesus. Everybody wanted to get close to Jesus. Everybody wanted to just touch Jesus and... And many people were touching Jesus, but this woman who was unclean, this woman who wasn't even allowed to be in the crowd, this woman, she just decided, I am going to get to Jesus today. I will not miss my opportunity to touch Jesus today. And so, this unclean woman begins making her way to Jesus. And I just want to pause and say today that if you're unclean this morning, if you feel unclean, you can still come to Jesus. If you have doubts about God, if you have doubts about the Bible, you can still come to Jesus this morning. If you have... um, some reservations, or if you have some some things in your life that you don't want anybody to know about, you can still come to Jesus even if you are unclean by religious standards. And so this woman, she began pushing through this crowd. I don't know how big the crowd was, but I could imagine that it may have took her a few minutes to push through all these people, just trying to get to Jesus. Just holding on to just a a little bit of hope that maybe, just maybe, this might be my answer. Maybe today I could be healed. Maybe today, after 12 years, today might be the day. And so, in verse 44... Luke tells us that she came up behind him and touched the fringe of his garment. And immediately, immediately, her discharge of blood ceased. And Jesus said, Who was it that touched me? And when all denied it, Peter said, Master, the crowds around you and are pressing in on you. But Jesus said, Someone touched me, 
For I perceive that power has gone out of me. And you see, there was people touching Jesus. There was people all around, and some of these people may have been sick people. They may have been people there who were blind in that crowd. There may have been people there who had a severe disease, but everybody was touching Jesus, but only one came expecting from Jesus. This woman was completely, desperately tired of the way her life was. She came ready to be healed. She said, I do not want to live one more day in the way that I am. I want to be changed today. She decided that whatever it cost her, she would get to Jesus. She was risking her life in that crowd that day. She could have been stoned for making all those people unclean. But she said, whatever it takes today, I will get healed. And so, she pushes through this crowd and as soon as she touches Jesus, she she couldn't get all the way to Jesus, but she, she just got close enough to touch the edge of his garment. And all of a sudden, like that, she was healed. And then Jesus, he stops everything. And he says, hold it. Who touched me? The disciples laughed and said, everybody touched you, Jesus. Everybody's reaching out just to get a hold of you. And he said, no, somebody came to get some power. Somebody come expecting me to do something for them. And everybody said, no, it wasn't me. No, it wasn't me. No, it wasn't me. And then this woman, she must have been overwhelmed. She must have been overwhelmed with fear because this man knew that she had touched him. What would he say? Would he have her stoned? What would this man say to her? But in the same moment she was crying tears of joy because she had just got what her heart longed for for 12 years. And this woman stands up in front of everybody and tells her story. She said, I had this problem for 12 years and I tried everything to fix it. I done everything I could to fix it. I done everything I knew and everything the doctors knew and nothing seemed to be working. I tried remedies. I tried doctor visits. I tried every human possible way to get well and I could not find a way to be well. But I heard about this teacher. I heard about this man named Jesus. And I knew he would be coming through here today. And so I pushed through the crowd. And I I just barely caught the edge of his garment. But when I did, I got what I had tried to get on my own for 12 years. And after 12 years of disappointment, this woman who broke the religious rules to get to Jesus, finally got what she wanted. And Jesus, he looks at this woman and he says, your faith has made you well. Go in peace. Her faith was directly connected to her desperation. She would not have had that faith in year one. She would not have had that that faith because she wasn't desperate yet. But she ran out every human avenue and she knew that 
if Jesus was who he said he was, then today she could be healed. Her faith come from a desperate situation. And so this morning, you and I, we are that woman. We are that woman, and I don't know what you're suffering from this morning. Maybe you're suffering from a physical ailment that's chained you down. Maybe it's an addiction. Maybe it's a habit. Maybe it's a relationship. Maybe it's shame. Maybe it's regret. I don't know what you're dealing with this morning, and I don't know how long you've dealt with it. Maybe you've dealt with it a year, or two years, or three years, or 12 years, or maybe even 30 years, but whatever it is today, are you tired of it? Are you desperate to see a move of God in your life? Maybe you've read all the self-help books. Maybe you've been to all the doctors. Maybe you've been to all the programs, but nothing seems to work. And so every day you... You tell yourself after you've messed up, I'm going I'm to do better tomorrow, I'm going to try harder tomorrow, and you make God promises that, you know, you, you try to leverage God, and you say, you know, God, if you'll set me free from this, I'll do this, or um, if you'll move in this situation, then I'll do this, and you're trying to bargain with your own ability. But what we find out is that we can't do anything. And you know this already. You know you can't do anything about what you're dealing with. You know that you can't stop on your own. Because if you could, you would have already. You would have already stopped because you hate what it, the thing that you're doing. You hate it, but you can't seem to stop. Do you know what I'm talking about this morning? If you could stop, you would have already. But the truth is that we don't have the willpower. We don't have the strength to break our own chains. We can't do it on our own. And we have to come to the same place that this woman come to on this day and say, I have exhausted every single human possibility of me getting well I cannot do this on my own and then we have to make the decision that whether I am clean or not whatever it costs me I am going to get a touch from Jesus today (coughs) because I know if I can just touch the very edge of his garment, I'll be made well. If I could just touch Jesus, my chains would be broken. If I could just touch Jesus, my world would be different. We need to make a decision today that whatever it takes today, we will touch Jesus. Stop trying by your own ability. Stop trusting in your own willpower. Stop trusting the doctors that you're going to. Stop trusting the medicine that you're on. And begin trusting in the only one who can heal. She could not fix herself. She could not pay someone to fix her. She had to have Jesus. She found out that the only person who could change her life was a man named Jesus. If we want to be free from whatever it is that is holding us down, whatever it is that is chaining us down, we have to realize that only Jesus can.
Say that with me. Only Jesus can. Because we're caught in this vicious cycle. You know what I'm talking about. Fail, try harder, repeat. Fail, try harder, repeat. Fail, try harder, repeat. Fail, try harder, repeat. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Fail, try harder, repeat. And so we're trying way harder than we used to, but we seem to be failing more than we used to. Because we are trusting in ourselves. Here's what we have to do. Our next step, in our journey to freedom is to admit that we cannot fix ourselves but have faith that Jesus can. We are all well aware that we cannot fix ourselves. Amen? We all know that we can't fix ourselves. But when you come to the place where you realize that I cannot set myself free but Jesus can, you are on the verge of finding freedom. You have walked right up to the edge of freedom and you are dancing on the line. But I want to give you one prayer this week to pray that will put you over the edge into a life of freedom. Are you interested in that this morning? When you bump up against those chains, that thing in your life that you want to be free from, when, when, you, when you try to get away and the chain pulls you back, here's what I want you to say. Jesus, I can't. You can. Please help me. Jesus, I can't. I've tried, I worked for it, I've done my best, and my best was not good enough. But you can. You can. Please help me. Here's the thing, guys. Jesus wants you to be free. He wanted that so much that he came and died so that you could be. When you invite Him to set you free, He will. He will. And so, while today we realize that we cannot, we are not able, we've tried, we went to the doctor, we done the program, we cannot, we say that Jesus can. There is hope for you today. I know your situation may feel hopeless. I know that you've tried and failed. And that you seem to be in a desperate situation. There is hope for you today. While you cannot overcome... Jesus already did. Jesus already overcome the thing that you're battling. Jesus overcome death, hell, and the grave, and He can overcome whatever it is that you are battling today. Jesus, He is the chain breaker. Amen. You are not the chain breaker. Stop trying to be. Stop trying to break your own chains. Swallow your pride and put your faith in Jesus to set you free. You cannot change your life. You cannot do it. 
But Jesus can. He can set you free. He can make a difference. He can change your life. But you have to ask. You have to reach out to Jesus today. And so right now they're going to come and play some music and and I, I just want to invite you to not start shuffling papers around and not, not go to the bathroom because we've got a moment here that we want, to, we want to just come into God's presence. And so in this moment, I, I, just, uh, I just like to ask everybody to bow your head and, and, and close your eyes because we want to have a moment to encounter God here and And so if you don't hear anything else today, if you, don't, if you forget everything else that I, I say today, I want you to remember this one thing, and that's that, that God loves you. And that He wants you in a relationship with Jesus. He wants to be your friend. And He wants to walk with you daily. And all you have to do to become... Friends with God is to believe the message that Jesus was who He said He was and done what He said He done. That He came and lived the perfect life, died the perfect death, and that He took away your sin. And so in this moment, if you want to make that decision to believe for the very first time in your life that Jesus really can save you, to believe that Jesus really can take away your sin. I want you to slip up your hands here just a moment this morning. There's nobody looking but me. And, and so if you need to make that decision to put your faith in Jesus and stop putting it in yourself, you can do that right now. I'm not going to call you up to the front. I'm not going to embarrass you. But if you need to make that decision, you have an opportunity to right now. Let me pray for us this morning. God, we, we love you and we thank you this morning for who you are. And God, we thank you that this morning you have the ability to save men's souls. So God, this morning, if there be anybody here who has never put their faith in you, God, I pray that today they would believe and they would trust in you. God, we thank you that you are the God who was and is and is to come. God, that you declare victory in our situations and that you are our chain breaker. In Jesus' name. This morning, you may be here. You're just tired from the fight. Just wore out trying to beat this thing on your own. You've just been working and trying and working and trying and failing. You're just tired of it. Anybody ever been there? Just tired of the same vicious cycle? I want to invite you to surrender to God's amazing grace this morning. You can be a Christian this morning and still be trying to do it on your own. Still trying to fight on your own. And so I want to invite you to the altar this morning.